the Tennessee Volunteers are the hottest thing going in college football recruiting right now. My question to you, should Tennessee fans be excited about Jeremy Pruitt's early recruiting ses- uh, success? They've had, 17, they've had 17 commits, two five-stars, four four-stars, 11 three-stars. They are currently ranked number three in the national recruiting rankings over at 247 Sports. But as it sits today, it is May 4th. National Signing Day is not until December. Uh, this all looks great and everything. I want to hear your thoughts first, and then I'll talk after. Well, as of right now, currently, yes, they should be excited. Why would they not be excited right now? That's what recruiting should is. Should they right? look at it and be upset? Should they look at it and think, oh, here we go? Another great recruiting class early. Why would we? No, just be happy for what you got and move on. I don't understand any reason to be anything other than that. No, I, I agree with that sentiment, right? That you need the hope, right? That's what recruiting does. It gives you hope about your football program. You're headed in the right direction, et cetera. Now, I do love Jeremy Pruitt, and you know that. Um, I don't know but that. It, how long have we been doing this show? Because you're about to bring up a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with Jeremy Pruitt. So, Well, look, so Huey jumps in. He said, Tennessee has won the past 10 straight pre- – yeah, that's, let's get out of this. Uh, oh, McKinnon did jump in and said Cam to the Steelers. Yeah, we've talked about that before. Yeah, I think that would be a very wise yeah, I don't know why the Steelers haven't done that yet. Yeah, I mean, it, it, needs, it needs to get – well, it may just be on Cam. I mean, well, Cam doesn't want to be a backup, and they need to say, you can come in and it'll be a legit competition, but yeah. they don't want to do that. They don't want to embarrass Ben by having Cam come in there and beat him out. Exactly. Uh, Huey said, every year Tennessee has a great class and falls flat. That's now, not true. It's just not true. Here's, here's what they got in the last week alone. They got five-star outside linebacker Terrence Lewis. They got five-star defensive end Dylan Brooks, four-star running back Cody Brown, four-star wide receiver Julian Nixon, and four-star safety Kamara Wilcoxon. Now, these are all incredibly highly rated players. They're all top 100 kids. This is a fantastic thing. If I were a Tennessee fan, I would be wary, and here is the reason. Because dating back to even before Butch Jones, you have had perennial top 15 classes recruiting every single year. They had a top 10 recruiting class that by their junior season won zero games in the SEC. They had five-star kids that didn't make it to school or whatever. So that's where I'm, I'm wary of it. Recruiting is a hopeful thing, right? You, you use it to build up your pride in your institution in the offseason. It gives you hope for the coming season. Even though these guys are not going to step foot on campus until 2021, it still gives you, uh, it, it makes you happy, it makes you proud, it gets you excited about what's coming in the future. I like Jeremy Pruitt. I think he is a fantastic recruiter. He has kept going the same kind of recruiting that Butch Jones has. However, we have seen it for so long that I don't know what to make of it. I I would like to think that these are different kinds of kids that they've got. However, I'm in the wait-and-see approach, and I don't know if I'm crazy. I'm not a Tennessee fan. But okay. I'm, I'm waiting and see because when I would look in the past and see this, I would think, okay, they have got some really good kids coming in. And now I say they got really good kids coming in. And once, I, and it, once again, you're not a Tennessee fan. So why should they be weary at all of something that might happen in 2021 and those kids won't really be relevant till 2022 when they're sophomores and actually trying to play? Yeah. And that's the thing. And McKinnon jumps so be in. be excited. No, it's okay to be excited. Yeah, why, why should you be wary of something that might not work out two years from now? Is it okay to, to that's continue? That's a terrible way to live life. No, no, no. Is it okay to continue to be excited about things and be uh, happy about things when you have seen it, like the same thing happen over and over and you keep getting the same results? But like, the isn't same that, thing isn't hasn't that... happened. They haven't finished three. We've had this conversation so many times. I don't know why we have to keep going. They've the finished difference number between four. a top three recruiting class and a top 15 recruiting class is, is from here to Texas. Hold on. They had a top four recruiting class not that long ago. Hold on. I, okay. I, 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 will, I will find it for you. But no, that's, that's the thing is you have seen this from Tennessee before, and – 
It no, but you you and I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really I'm really getting you uh, worked up today. Well, because you contradict yourself so much, and it's it it, it it's getting to a point where I guess it's driving me insane. I'm sorry, and I shouldn't be like this, but. You, you're the one that comes on here and says you have to have multiple years of good recruiting classes. You can't just have a number one recruiting class year and then have a 15 recruiting class year and a 10 recruiting class year and be any good in the SEC. You get your ass whipped because you're not deep enough. Yeah. Okay? They, you've, they had said a, it yourself, you've said it yourself. If you don't yes. have four top five recruiting classes – in a row, then you can't compete. You've said it. So having one, yes, you can't have five or four if you don't have one. Agreed. So get one and get excited. And if you get another one, then you keep being excited. And you get another one and you keep being excited. And if you have one and then next year you fall to 20, then you can have a problem. But they, don't don't worry about it until then. They had number 10 last year. That, that ain't three. It, no, 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 it's not. In 2019, they had number 13. In 2018, let's see, that was Pruitt's first year. 2018, they were 21. So they're moving in the right direction. 2017, uh, let's see, that was Butch's last year. They had number 17. That was actually Pruitt's first season. Um, first year on the job, anyway. First year on the job, but not first year recruiting. 2016, they had... Let's see. Number Nothing 14. matters at 2016 because none of those kids are there anymore. In 2015, 2015, they were number four nationally, number two in the SEC, and had two five stars, had a bunch of four stars, and I mean, let's see, 20. Let's see, Alvin Kamara was in that class in 2015, and 2018 would have been their last year. That last season, 2018. They had, what, two two wins in the SEC? So, now, understandably, that was a coaching change. What I'm saying is, you can get the great-rated kids, and that's awesome. But they, they haven't been getting the great-rated kids. That's the... Pr- you. They've had nothing but top 20 classes, and most of them have been top 15 and top 10. And I understand it's in the SEC. I get that. What I, what I have said in the past is, you have to have multiple top 10 classes to compete for a national championship. Correct. Right. Well, if you're if you can't compete in the SEC, you can't compete for a national title. Right. Right. Because all the national title contenders are in the SEC. But what they have had is highly rated kids that haven't amounted to anything at all. That's where it becomes an issue. So if if I'm a Tennessee fan, yeah, you you get excited. Um, on. Two five stars. How many five stars does Clemson have? Alabama have. Ohio State, LSU. See, you can't have two five stars and say, well, but that was, they were ranked, you know, 10, top 10. That's really good. No, it's not. They're ranked top 10 because they have a shitload of four and three stars. All right. But, but how many of those four stars are really three stars? Well, and, and they were just graded incorrectly. And, and that's you where I'm. You have five star talent or you can't win. That's where I'm trying to figure this out is because they have got. There's nothing to figure out. Look at the stars. No. Hold on. Hold on. This this isn't a complex thing. Should they be excited? Yes. Be excited. Anytime something positive happens for your school, be excited. That's okay. No, It's all right to be excited. Right, right, right. But uh, jumping into whether or not, like, the the five stars, whatever, they got two five stars this go round, right? So far. They've got four four stars. That's that's not a ton, but that's all right. That's all right. They've got 11 three-stars. They've already got 17 kids in this class. Yeah, that's why they're ranked where they're ranked, and right. none of those kids are going to matter when it comes to really doing something in the SEC, and you know that. Those you, th- those 11 three-stars will help you beat South Carolina and Kentucky and Missouri. Yeah, They will. They're not going to help you beat Bama. They're not going to help you beat Georgia. They're not going to help you beat Florida. Yeah, you're right. You're 100% right. You're 100% right. So be right. excited. But the expectation – here's the problem, Gary – You have expectations of what you think a college, a successful school should look like because you're a Bama fan, okay? And you refuse to see outside of that. Oh, that's not true because I also know that LSU is insanely successful and they are, they they build it the same way. 
Clemson builds that. it the same not, way. Ohio yeah, State, but I, I'm an LSU fan, but I also see that there's different levels of success and there's different things that it's okay to be excited about. Every school is not playing the same game, and that's okay. True, but Tennessee and Florida are playing the same game. I mean, they are literally they're, they're, they're neck just and not. neck. They're just not. How how are they not? They are recruiting the exact same level of athlete. Like how how is it not the same? The the all right the same all right, by that standard, Butch Jones and Urban Meyer are the same because they've got the same head coaches. The same. The, uh, because they got the They're same not athletes? the same because one school has one of the top four or five best coaches in the history of college football run their program for 10 years, and the other one had a moron run it for four, and then a moron before that run it for four. Yeah. yeah. They're not the same because the organizations haven't made good hire, and that's fine. That's okay. You're going to miss hiring. That's all right. That's going to happen. You were this close to getting Dan Mullen. You really were. Yeah. I mean, if, if like Florida, you, you almost made a hell of a hire, and it just got pulled out for money. But there's nothing you can do about that. If you offer the same guy, and the other school gets him, you're not playing on the same field. Why'd he go there for the same amount of money? Because it ain't more money at Florida than Tennessee. Hell, they don't have close no, to the athletic it's, budget. It's not. Tennessee it's has. not even close. You're right. But why did so? Why did he choose Florida over Tennessee? Better run organization. Yeah, but you're right. No, it's not. No, it's not recruiting it because I can walk outside in the state of Florida and guess what? Well, that's a just, yes, a hundred percent. There's a shitload of three stars that are really four stars, but because all the kids are so good in the state of Florida, then I can give them all four star grades. True. Okay. Yeah. You, you're you see, you're not finding that. So you, you have excited, a valid point. Be happy. That's not your competition. Yeah, but it. I mean, you. But it's not. It's not Gary. It is the competition. Like that's you. If you're a Tennessee fan, you are wanting to beat. Like that's who your goal is to beat every Correct. year is Florida that's and Georgia and Alabama. And, yes, you should be trying to beat those schools. You absolutely should be trying to beat those schools. But if you were to go nine and three, okay, when you've been in the toilet for a long time, nine and three and losing to Alabama, Florida, and and Georgia, it ain't so bad. While it sucks because you hate those schools. It really isn't the end of the world. And I every Tennessee fan I got would take it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, basically, we're setting expectation levels for what Tennessee should be. Uh, it sucks good that their, rival, their two biggest rivals are two of the best, three of the best schools in not just the SEC, but in the country. That's, That's tough. That yeah. sucks. That is, you are correct. Auburn, Auburn's got the same pill to swallow. That's a, Matt jumped in with that. He said, uh, "He said, does Tennessee just have to accept that they will be a middle of the road SEC team, get some good wins, lose random games, and finish bowl eligible? Uh, if, it, if they can every year beat one of pull an upset against a Bama, a Georgia, and an Auburn, and win all the rest of their games, their fans will call those successful seasons for a while. Now, at some point in time, they'll want to make that jump, but after what they've lived through for the last twenty years, yeah, no, they'll yeah. take that." They'll take I, I that think, win all day long. I think you got a valid point. Um, but it's the difference between expectations. So should they be excited? Yes, because you can't get there unless you unless you recruit. But you and me, people who look at this stuff intelligently, not rabbit fans of one fan base, of one school, but know how this works, a number three ranking doesn't mean anything to me. Not right now. Tell anyway. me how you got it. Oh, two five stars and 23 – you know, three stars. Yeah, I don't care about your ranking anymore. Yeah, no, I no that, longer that care about your ranking because I know the difference between a five star and a three star. Uh, McKenna jumped in, said Tennessee needs to focus on winning in the SEC East, and then if they can accomplish that, uh, win the SEC as a whole. Once that's done, you're competing on a national stage. They might have to settle until then. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, what I'm, that's exactly it's the what same I'm thing. Saying. We're yeah. on the same page. Yeah, and I, I, I think I agree with you. I think my. So where I got confused, even in my own question, is the difference between excited and expectation, right? So yeah. get excited about this. Uh, and and for me, obviously not as a Tennessee fan, I'm in the wait and see approach. But for now, yes, be excited because you have beaten some big time programs for these kids. It's not like Alabama and Georgia didn't want these guys. No, you, no. And they pulled them from the state of Georgia. They pulled yeah. them away from Georgia, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. LSU, Clemson. These are places that were all recruiting these kids. Yes. And you got them. That's yes. a good. You can't beat them on the field until you beat them in recruiting. 
you are correct. Because if you're not going after the same kids, then you're not then you're not going after the right kids. No, a hundred percent. I mean, we know that, right? This is how this thing works. Oh yes, hundred percent. All right, but that's it. I mean, this, this is why I hate the rain. It's why people do the same thing for Michigan all the time. Oh, Michigan's got a top ten class. Why can't they beat Ohio State? Because Ohio State has a top one or two class, not top ten. There's a big difference. And how they get that top ten? Oh, they got a shitload of three stars. Yeah. And somebody said, "Look how good this recruiting class is." Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I I agree with you. I, I don't agree. like volume of 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 three and under stars giving you your your recruiting ranking. I'm not I'm not okay with that. Matt on YouTube said, "Save this show and replay it in three years." <laughs> I'm with you. I I I totally get what you're saying. I mean, I, you, anything that happened before Pruitt, I can't speak to because they had complete foolery at the quarterback position at the head coaching situation. Well, both really. Well, but you fair. can't have a good quarterback if you don't have a good head coach. I mean, now, that you, guy's just it, it matters too much in college football. It, it just matters too much. It most certainly does, especially nowadays when things have changed. Uh, so, so very much. The offenses are completely different now than they used to be. And I just, anything that happened with Butch Jones or anybody before them until you get to Phil Fulmer, I I don't care. I don't, you bring all of the numbers you want. It doesn't matter. Flush them all down the toilet because they had an idiot running the place. Yeah. So it don't, it it doesn't matter. And Butch Jones, like him, love him, hate him, whatever. He might not be the greatest coach in the world. He's a really good coach, though. He's a hell of a lot better than anything they've had. Up till this point, yeah, he he was definitely better than uh, than Derek Dooley, uh, but he did he lost that program in that last season, and that's not to say it wasn't time to uh, to let him go. Uh, you needed you needed a different voice. Um, I think having Phil Fulmer as your athletic director probably helps out the football program more than it does any other program on that campus. Oh yeah, uh, and and I think you'll see you'll see the differences. So I mean, obviously they went eight and five last year. Uh, that's that's a welcome change. You know, they they were winning nine games a year under under Butch two years yeah, before but, the last year. Uh, but when it all went downhill, I mean, it it really went in a crater. And, I mean, it's tough to get back. What Pruitt did last year was really, really impressive. Yep. Uh, y- you lose early, but finding a way to come back later and, and find a way to win even Not though you're having those kids quit on the program and let them keep fighting, that yeah. was a big deal. That was that definitely a big deal. A big deal. Definitely a big deal. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and jump into the last topic here. 